Last night, I watched a BBC documentary titled Undercover with the Clerics, Iraq's Secret Sex Trade. The documentary is about mutta, which is basically halal prostitution. If you're a Muslim man and you want to hire a prostitute for an hour or a day or three days, you get a Muslim cleric to put together a written or verbal temporary marriage contract saying that you're married to the prostitute for an hour or a day or three days. You pay the prostitute and you pay the sheikh for helping you do things the Islamic way. Keep in mind, Muhammad did not come to stop people from doing horrible things. He came to show people how to do horrible things while still pleasing the and great Unlike God, the documentary, I'll be going through Islam's most trusted sources to show why so many Muslim clerics believe that pimping out young girls is morally acceptable and even morally praiseworthy. But in this video, I wanted to address the attempts of British Muslims to cover up the scandal and to have the documentary taken down. The Daily Mail reports, More than 17,000 people, it's over 18,000 as of this recording, have demanded the BBC take down a documentary about young Iraqi girls being sold for sex, calling it disrespectful to law-abiding Shia Muslims. The corporation broadcast Undercover with the Clerics, Iraq's secret sex trade, on October 3rd, an investigation into sexual exploitation of children and young women by clerics in Iraq. Journalists caught clerics offering pleasure marriages to girls as young as nine, where men banned from sex outside marriage can pay a dowry for an interim wife. The practice is banned in Iraq, but eight out of ten Shia clerics who were approached were willing to carry it out, the BBC World Investigation found. Eight out of ten Shia clerics, 80%, were willing to put together temporary marriage contracts. It's technically banned in Iraq, but the documentary reveals that the Muslim sheikhs care more about what Muhammad said is permissible than about what the Iraqi civil courts say is permissible. Shocker. But now, more than 17,000 people have signed an e-petition demanding the BBC removes the show from iPlayer. The petition to the Change.org petition, my goodness, get an editor, Daily Mail, set up by Mo Kay, accused the corporation of cherry-picking misguided men who do not represent Shia Islam in any way. Yeah. Muslim clerics who oversee mutta marriages don't represent Islam. I guess Muhammad doesn't represent Islam either, since he allowed and promoted mutta marriages. But a BBC spokesman told Mail Online it won't be deleted and said, This thorough investigation was conducted over an 11-month period and exposes the sexual exploitation of children and young women. The documentary fully complies with BBC editorial guidelines. It claimed the women and girls in the show did not know that it was being used to belittle Shia Islam and their words would be used against their faith. I didn't catch one criticism against Islam or against Shia Muslims in the documentary. The emphasis was on Shia clerics who are pimping out women and girls. The BBC have recently published a documentary titled Iraq's Secret Sex Trade, in which they go undercover to reveal the heinous crimes committed by a number of men who claim to follow the Shia faith. Instead of making a documentary about the world's largest peaceful annual pilgrimage held in Iraq, hosting 20 million people each year, the BBC have decided to cherry-pick a handful of misguided men who do not represent Shia Islam in any way, shape, or form to tarnish the image of Iraq and Shias worldwide. Classic response. The petitioner included variations of both the Anyone who follows Muhammad's teachings is not a true Muslim defense. And the, if you criticize any Muslim for doing anything, you're attacking all Muslims defense. Gotta love the classics. But think about how disgusting this petition is. There are Muslim clerics literally pimping out Muslim women and girls in Iraq. The Iraqi government is not stopping it. Iraqi police are not stopping it. The Muslim population is not stopping it. So the BBC, which historically shields these kinds of abusers from criticism by attacking anyone who exposes them, 
suddenly gets an injection of integrity and shines a light on what's happening in Iraq. And British Muslims respond, stop it! Take down the documentary! By criticizing Mutta, you're attacking all of us! Well, if the BBC stops shining a light on Muslim clerics pimping out women and girls, and no one else is doing anything about it, what happens to the women and girls? What happens to the clerics? They'll just continue doing what they've been doing. Nothing will change. If these petitioners had the slightest concern for the women and girls being victimized by halal pimps, they would want these clerics exposed. They would want the women and girls protected. Instead, they want journalists to look the other way so that Islam can do what it does best, destroy the lives of women and girls. As part of the show, BBC Arabic's Nawal al makafi explored claims since 2003 Iraqi women have been trapped into prostitution and pimped out by the religious elite. One young widow alleged that a cleric sold her to his friends in a prostitution ring while secret filming revealed another cleric conducting a pleasure marriage with a girl 13. In Karbala, Iraq's most important religious city, the undercover reporter is introduced to a cleric who claims pleasure marriage with a child is halal. Nine years old plus, there's no problem. No. It's up to you how you want to do it. She's permitted to you. You're allowed to perform from behind. Do what you desire. You're allowed to perform from behind. He was referring to anal sex. Multiple clerics in the documentary said that anal sex with the little girls is perfectly acceptable. In fact, if the girls are virgins, anal sex is considered preferable to vaginal sex because taking a girl's virginity carries a bigger price tag. Two of the three clerics, secretly filmed by BBC Arabic, describe themselves as followers of Ayatollah Sistani, one of the most senior figures in Shia Islam. However, in a statement to the BBC, as part of the show, the Ayatollah said, If these practices are happening in the way you are saying, then we condemn them unreservedly. Temporary marriage is not allowed as a tool to sell sex in a way that belittles the dignity and humanity of women. But thousands have slammed the BBC for allegedly tarnishing Islam on national television at prime time on Friday evenings by signing the petition. The pet Nice. Tell me more about how your religion is such a benefit to humanity. Notice that the Ayatollah pretends that he's condemning Muta without actually condemning it. He doesn't say temporary marriage is not allowed. He doesn't even say temporary marriage is not allowed as a tool to sell sex. He says temporary marriage is not allowed as a tool to sell sex in a way that belittles the dignity and humanity of women. So tell me, Ayatollah, how do you pay a Muslim girl or woman for sex for an hour or a day in a way that doesn't belittle her dignity and humanity? Nothing belittles the dignity and humanity of women and girls like Islam does. After we explore the sexual abuse of Muslim women and girls in Iraq, maybe we'll take a look at the sexual abuse taking place in Pakistan and in Afghanistan and in every other part of the Muslim world. Then we can think about how this pattern of sexual abuse is connected to Islamic grooming gangs in the UK. Finally, we can try to understand why the spread of Islam is always accompanied by the spread of sexual exploitation and abuse. Hint, if you take one of history's most prolific perverts as your ultimate role model, you're going to get problems like this.